The African stories in the diaspora can only be told by Africans and African descendants. On this program, we share the experiences of Africans to educate, inform, and entertain ourselves. Diaspora Digest covers every aspect of the African, from their home culture to the new normal. Make time on this channel with some annoy as he sails to every corner of the world to share with you the African story on Diaspora Digest. Hey, welcome to another edition of Diaspora Digest. If you have not subscribed yet, just check the down button and just click on subscribe and click on the bell and more notifications when we have new videos coming. And today my guest is another Ghanaian I'm so happy to talk to. And he is someone who has also been around the world, moving from one country to another. And today he's just going to share with me. By the way, he's a mechanical engineering student in ASU. And he's just going to tell me a lot more about what he does and some of the things that he's inventing. Yeah, behind the scenes, he told me a little, but I want him to share with you. Stay tuned. Welcome, Desmond. All right, thank you very much for introducing me. Uh, it's been a long time coming, honestly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you are happy to be on Diaspora Digest. I am. Hey, anyway, with your name, I <laughs> say it to be someone from one part of Ghana. I don't want to mention it, but just tell me where you're coming from in Ghana. Uh, I'm from Volta region, uh, which is on the eastern side of Ghana. Um, it, I don't know. It, it has its own troubles nowadays, but it's quite a beautiful place, honestly. Uh, every time I get the chance to go back, I happily go, you know. Mm. I suggest anyone who wants to travel go back to Africa. It's a really good place to be, like beautiful oceans, great people, good food. Always a great pleasure to be there. So when was the last time you visited Ghana? Uh, last year, actually. Uh, wow. Yeah, I went back for a month. Uh, during the summer, so I think. Uh, After how many years long of being absent? Uh, last I had been back was 2014 after high school. Okay. I was in Qatar at that point. So after 2014, oh, after high school, I decided to take a trip back home with my family, go see people, you know, enjoy the dynamic out, uh, out in Africa, I guess. And then after that, I came here stayed uh, had been here for about five years five years yeah and then because previously when i left ghana i was uh what 14 and uh when i traveled back in 2014 i went with my parents so this time i went by myself which mm. was quite a, a throw uh, mm. 20 hours flying wow yeah <laughs> and the experience was something else right it was i mean because at this point i had been back only twice mm. given that moment and uh the and that was your first time traveling alone yeah Oh, well, By yourself, time. man. The second time. Because I came here with myself uh, from Qatar. Oh, okay. And, uh, I mean, it was always, it's always surreal whenever you go back. Because family always gets surprised when they see what you look like. You know, everyone's like, oh, you grew a beard. <laughs> like, I mean, natural, you know, nature had happened, I guess. But, I don't know, it, it was great, you know. I enjoyed. Uh, so what's up in Qatar? What? took you to Qatar? Uh, so my dad is a, an engineer himself. Okay. He worked in uh, Valco, uh, which they produce aluminum. Mm. My grandfather worked there as, as well. So, you know, back in, I think, 2007, 2008, that way, kind of, the company wasn't really doing so well. Yeah. So they had to let go of some of the employees, which luckily my dad didn't have to get off for a while. But, you know, trying times finally they just had to everyone just had to be gone so uh he stayed at home for a while you know did almost everything became a taxi driver did or farmed for a while he went back to a village with my mom and i lived with my uncle for about a year and you know they went back farmed for a while you know did a whole lot of things corn uh eggplants like just the whole way up to nine yards they just started grinding hard mm -hmm. until um around 2008 i believe 2009 
that way. Actually, yeah, 2008, uh, he got an opportunity to go work in uh, Qatar because um, the company he got hired for was uh, Catalan, which is also an aluminum company. Okay. So they were hiring people because their previous uh, employees were Norwegians and their contract was running out. So rather than have to hire them back, they decided to go a different direction and uh, hire a new group of people. So luckily my dad and among you know his friend group were hired mm -hmm. and from that group, you know, a lot of them worked for Valco as well. And so they moved to Qatar. Uh, I got to meet a lot of people while, while I was there. Uh, Ghanaians? A lot of Ghanaians, yeah. Most of them, we were, we, or our parents knew each other. Unfortunately, we didn't get introduced to each other because we were t too young. So when we got there, we started, you know, communicating, talking about the things we all had in common mm -hmm. as relating to Valco and you know we realized we had so those people you met were also former workers of Valco yeah so we realized we had so much in common like we had been around each other for so long but we never really mm -hmm. talked or knew each other so through that you know we started connecting we bonded really well I had to I, had, I still talk to my friend group which a lot of them traveled outside the country after high school most of them went to China, some went to Poland, a couple went to Ukraine, London. Uh, and you decided to come to America? Yeah, a couple of us actually came here. Some of us, uh, some of them live in Missouri. Uh, they went to Oh, Missouri. okay. Yeah, which I have surprisingly never have to, I haven't, I haven't gone to see them basically, which... But you are closer to them too. <laughs> you're right, it's like what, three hours away? Yeah. But, um, yeah, we, you know, we just had that connection, so... Every now and then we, you know, have a conference call, we talk to each other, things like that. And our parents still live there. My sister, or my youngest sister still lives in Qatar with my parents, mm. as well as, uh, you know, a bunch of other pe you know, people who, but a lot of them still live and work there. So um, I, you know, after high school, most of us graduated. So, you know, we decided to move out of our parents' house, you know, and go to school outside the country. And, uh, you know, I made it here uh, after high school, I decided to take a, a year off as compared to most of my friends who decided to go on to college immediately. So do you, do you, do you, do you speak any of the Ghanaian languages? Uh, yeah, I speak uh, two Ghanaian languages. Uh, as most Ghanaians do, they speak either three or two languages. Mm -hmm. yeah. I speak Chi and Ewe okay. and uh, English. Okay. Luckily for me, I, I don't know, because most people have a first language, second language, I seem to have learned both at the same time. Uh, so you speak fluent uh, airway? Yes. Uh, I sp well, granted, I've been here for a while, so mm. it kind of gets lost in trans translation mm. sometimes. Mm. But um, yeah, I spoke English with my dad when I was growing up, like completely every time. I don't know. It's just been a thing. And uh, my mom, I speak airway with. So. But you have a very complete um, American accent, if I could put it this way. Kind of. Like, mm. Because I went to an American school in Qatar, mm. so, or an American system school, where the curriculum is American, and most of the students who went there had either traveled to America, lived in America, you know, things like that. So you get influenced by that culture, and then, you know, I first moved there, I spoke to them, and they were like, yeah, you sound weird. <laughs> I was like, oh. So you don't agree with people who usually say that, um, as soon as we get here, yeah. we kind of like uh, try to speak like. I yeah. mean, it, it's it's no fault of our own doing because for the most part, when you get here, your way of understanding the language changes as people say or point point out things you mm -hmm. pronounce. So for me, when I moved to Qatar, it was I said ka, which most Ghanaians do. It's like ka, tomato, you mm -hmm. know, things like that, but. I, go, I got here there and people started pointing car. out. Yeah, it's like, why do you say that? Because there were moments where I'd had conversations with them. And they, eh? they were like, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. You know. So now I had to. And uh, you kind of like feel embarrassed sometimes. Exactly. To you be know? repeating yourself. Yeah. Because I'm like, uh, why don't you understand me? Which, I mean, I understand we're two different cultures, mm -hmm. so it didn't bother me too much. <laughs> it just was a moment where I was like. I have 
to kind of alter things. Yeah. And initially, it seems very weird because you pronounce car. Nowadays, I say that I say that, and it seems normal. Mm-hmm. But before, I say it, and I was like, like you be you are conscious of yourself yeah. whether what I said right. someone yeah. understands. <laughs> exactly. Mm. And so gradually, you know, that whole process kind of continued. Mm. Uh, as the same at the same time, you go back home and you speak your the way you know how to speak it with your family. So when you go back home, that was last year. Yeah. How what was the, the the experience like? Like in terms of speaking and were they like, oh, why this month we your, <laughs> your accent has changed? Because <laughs> it happens where the people, you know, they pointed out. But I made a conscious decision to make uh like speak my native language yeah. when I went back. Which it still has that undertone of oh you're not from here kind of, mm-hmm. but at the same time I didn't want to seem condescending. To so the point where so some of so what are some of the things you can say in a way so that at least for my viewers for them to know like oh this guy has not lost the language. Oh uh, let's see. All right, um, give me a sentence. So Uh yeah, Mustafa, but yes. Uh, uh, let's see. I'll try to introduce myself if you will. Nyankonya uh, Desmonyaho, Macho Vota Region, Ghana. Nyachila uh, Okonkonya, Richard Nyaho, Regina Nyaho. A little bit of that. Uh, it it kind of sounds strange when yeah. other people hear me speak because they're like, oh, yeah, you don't sound proper. Yeah. But, but do you, do you by any way relate to Nyaho Nya- Clinic? No, no, no. no, the Nyaho Clinic. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, no one ever told me even where. Uh, surprisingly though, um, when I got here, I have a lot of uh, somewhat. The first people that I got to know were like Asians, you know, uh, Koreans, Japanese students. My roommates are Vietnamese, so uh, when I first introduced myself to them. I was like, my name is Desmond, and they asked for my last name, so I said Nyaho, and I had a couple of Japanese students who were like, oh, Nyaho, Nyaho, Tamako, I'm like, wait, how so, do you know them? <laughs> so they know the Nyaho Tamako? I know, I, know. I, was, I was in awe, I was like, wait, how do you know him? Yeah, so meaning the Nyaho Tamako name is a big, yeah. big one out there. Yeah, uh, it apparently turned out his name was in a game show in Japan mm. and, uh, and so almost every or at least a lot of the Japanese students that I've met they seem to know who he was which I was always in awe of I'm like <laughs> ow <laughs> it was strange <laughs> so let's talk about your your studies in 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 ASU you are a mechanical engineering student right what goes into it you just uh I mean the basics of anything machine related so you have the main, the three main fields of engineering, which electrical, mechanical, and civil. So you can go down the list where there are others, but these are the main, you know, fields that I thought over here. So your civils do, you know, construction. You know, that's how it's boiled down. You know, your roads, your bridges, things that involve constructing things with concrete, I guess. Uh, you have your electricals, which anything electrical based, basically wiring, you know, sometimes programming or coding, which it doesn't al- always factor into their field, but anything electrical based. And uh, you have mechanical engineers who kind of dabble a little bit in those three fields. Granted, whenever you get here, your initial stages, they kind of teach you a little bit of everything. So. My field as a mechanical engineer involves anything machinery based. So you have a welding, which oh, sometimes factors into that, uh, fixing things with like a screwdriver or things like that, which granted doesn't really explain much about it. But machinery is the main like focus, basically. So have you done s- any projects so far? Yeah, um, what is it called? Currently, I'm working on my senior design project for my senior classes, which I'm only taking one uh, senior class. So what is it all about? Uh, so after you've completed your studies here in ASU, your final semester 
uh, the final two semesters, you have two main classes. Uh, you have Senior Design 1 and Senior Design 2. Senior Design 1 offers you to work with the team. So you have a bunch of projects or initially we're all expected or we're supposed to submit project ideas. So everyone in my or in my class right now said, said, submitted project ideas and you have a few I think five or six uh, instructors that pick a team so if they like an idea they'll pick a team where they work on it now if they don't like any of the ideas they have their own that they implement into you know the schedules of the class so for example, I sub suggested an uh, what's it called? An autonomous lawnmower, where it mows the lawn wherever you know. I mainly suggested it for the back over there, where uh, along the lines when you're going to the police station, like there's like a mm -hmm. close to the train track, mm -hmm. where the you know the lawn or the bush is so tall. So essentially, I suggested we do an autonomous lawnmower where. It kind of mows the lawn over there. Granted, the ones we have on campus are expensive, so you wouldn't want to leave something like that on that side of campus where someone could pick it up. Also, you don't know what's out there. You have rocks, things like that, that could damage the blades. So, if a, if uh, a class built something like that, then we could be able to use that as a, as a test project. Uh, unfortunately, though, that project had already been done, which I didn't know about. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, but my advisor, my class, uh, my as a student, every student has an advisor, right? So my advisor decided to pick me, uh, Abdullah, Al Saleh, Bander, and uh, Enoch. And we are, well, he, he picked a, a project that was submitted by Hydro, which is a conveyor belt systems uh, developer over here in Jonesboro. So, we were supposed to, or we are supposed to build uh, an autonomous material mover for Hydro's facility, where we move, or uh, moves pro uh, products or you know things from one side of the facility to the other, and it's supposed to move the uh, move things around autonomously. You know, no interference, no human interference, no human touch, nothing. So when you do some of these things, at the end of the day, is it does it go like in a, a larger production kind of thing? It could. Um, the goal is to after going through the standards and all those procedures like checking of it's. Uh, There's a possibility when you go through the whole because what we do is a prototype phase, where we are basically solving a problem they have, mm -hmm. and if the solution is good enough and they see it fit to work in their facility. And they want to replicate. Yes. Now, uh, you get the recognition for it and you could possibly get hired for it if, you know, they like the idea and the people behind it. The patent, right? You get a yeah, patent, you right? Yeah, patent it. That's, uh, we have the opportunity to do so if we want to. I don't know how or the direction my group is mm. thinking of, but it's also a possibility. Uh, but yeah, we currently, that's what we are working on. But yeah, um, basically it goes where, whenever it gets to wh wherever its destination is, it goes up and then, you know, it allows the person who's in that facility to pick it up without having to bend down. Which, currently we are in the fabrication stage, so by the end of the semester we're supposed to finish it, present it to a, a panel of, you know, our colleagues and you know the judges based off of that and that makes up our semester or our senior design you know project is complete and that's our final semester basically. So let me just take you back home. So what are some of the things you miss home whilst you are here? Uh, and, and some of the fond memories you have? Oh a lot. Uh, football. I mean over here they call it soccer but uh, <laughs> that, that's one thing that Competition here is different. I I do play in a league over here where luckily I'm able to play with Mexicans who seem to have the same passion for the game as I do. So you know, a, a recognized team. Yeah, uh, we have a Hispanic league, and 
I'm in no way saying Americans don't play. They mm-hmm. do play. We actually have a lot of Americans who play in that uh, in the league with us. Quite a few in my team. Actually, my team is probably the most diverse team in the league, and it's a Hispanic league. Mm-hmm. We comprise of uh, Japanese students, uh, American students. I'm the only guy in, in there, but you know. And then there's a lot of Mexicans and you know, other teams have Hispanic people in there. And you were you were also the unofficial coach for the uh, ASU. True, yeah. Uh, for we had a club sport a mm-hmm. while back. Unfortunately, we the people who were in it as long as well as myself. We, you know, as time passes, we're all getting up in our degrees and you know. We didn't really have a lot of time to commit to it as much as we did when we first got here. So ultimately, the team kind of fell apart. But yeah, it, for a time, it was it was quite a, an incredible experience. Uh, we got the chance to travel to Alabama where we played in a competition. Uh, I think the Eagle competition or a tournament. We managed to you know play really well. Granted, it was our first time in a tournament after having been out for a while. So. We did fairly well. We won two games, I think, or one out of three. But yeah, it was it was a good experience for you know first time as being here, you know, having to experience a different culture and being able to travel at the same time, you know, go different places. So that brings me to let me pick it from where you said you you you, you belong to a diverse um, team. Mm. So what was your experience, your cultural shock? when you, you first came here? Luckily, I didn't experience a lot of culture shock. Mm-hmm. I mean, in terms of the difference in environment, yeah, but... In terms of food? Food, I had been introduced to a, 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 a little bit of what America is, because mm-hmm. having lived back in Qatar, I'd been introduced to a lot of these like cultures. Mm-hmm. You know, I consumed a lot of American media, uh, most of my friends talked about America, or a lot of them talked about America. You know, we had that communication. Uh, I still have good friends who I went to school with who live here now. So it's like you prepped America, but you had a prep. Pretty much. Like, <laughs> I came in just straight off, you know, everything seemed pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't feel lost at home. I mean, in a different country, I didn't feel the yearn to go visit, you know, my family or my parents. I didn't feel the need to always call them to tell them the slight discomfort that mm-hmm. I had here, you know, which... And you're a big boy too, so... Right, you know, I'm, I'm I, honestly, I feel lucky to be a, to be able to have that kind of experience. experience yeah. It was seamless enough for me to not have to worry my parents back home because they still had two of my sisters to take care of and the last thing they wanted is for me to be, you know, calling them about I want to come back home or I miss you guys so much you know so do you meet a lot of uh, Africans or Ghanaians here was the Ghanaian culture or the African culture here uh, initially when I first got here I met some people I met some Ghanaians uh, they had graduated and left already <laughs> but eventually some other people came by but you know as my semester progressed I unfortunately didn't get to interact with the African community as mm. much as I should have but it certainly kind of was it because you were busy a lot of the times and a lot of the times too it was just because i was just zoned out doing other things Mm. my personal demeanor is i usually stay to myself (laughs) until or unless i'm introduced to a group of people where i a hundred percent sure want to depend on on them or something like that now, granted, the African community here has done a lot to be recognized, which I am very proud of. But it's just, you know, the type of person you end up being. You know, you get here and you get to introduce yourself to so much culture that you seem, or I, in my situation, I seem to have forgotten my own, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate and sad. But, you know, I, I have been indulged in other people's cultures more than I have introduced them to mine, which. It certainly isn't very good mm. in terms of showing the rest of the world what or where I'm from, because it doesn't necessarily give a lot of insight to what or where I'm from to other people, where 
they only know the stereotypes a lot of the time so it's like oh africans live in huts and things like that which a lot of my friends would dispute that now because mm -hmm. you know, i've slowly kind of told them a little bit but not to the point where i feel i should have it's been really awesome talking to you and uh i hope that uh, we had a very good uh, interactive session um thank you so much for being on my show that's what i just uh thank you very much for having me uh this is a great opportunity you know it gives a little bit of insight to where africans are from uh, the different types of africans you know we're not just one country after all and uh yeah thank you very much for having me diaspora digest is a very good platform to introduce you know students and americans uh, uh to the world we come from you know it's certainly uh a, a gateway into understanding african culture i'm really appreciative of that thank you hey people thank you so much for watching that's what I just and my guest this morning Nyahu from Volta Region, Ghana. It's been very awesome. If you've not subscribed to That's what Digest, please do subscribe and press the button and share with your friends. And we come in your way with a lot of superb interactive sessions, as I always tell you. Stick and stay. Ciao.